Okay, hi there guys, I'm Will and this is Civilization 6. And uh, in this video we're going to be talking about... Talking about how to beat this uh, Path to Nirvana DLC scenario. This is a really fun scenario which basically deals mostly about religion. So you're just going to be trying to influence as much as these uh, Asian lands as you can with your religion. So this is super cool. Super cool scenario. And I played through this scenario on Prince difficulty, so the default difficulty, and as China, which is Taoism. And as you can see, you have all the all the other like ideologies here of the region. So pick whatever you want to pick. But um, I picked China, and this worked out really well. And this scenario is definitely different. It has very special rules, as we can see here that uh, there's no technology tree or science, so science doesn't exist here at all. There's no gold, no diplomacy, no tourism. Borders are fixed culturally, so you will not be doing settlers, you will not be doing expansion. Features cannot be removed. Traders do not create roads. So this is basically locked borders. Everyone has already their countries or city-states or whatever. So everything that happens here that is changing is basically religion. This is the only thing that's going to be changing, apart from like the improvements and cities. Cities improving themselves. And um, then it says here that you can only get one city-state suzerain bonus from a certain type. And then when you send envoys, you will get 300 religious pressure to a city-state. And how this scenario is scored, it has 15 round, uh, 50 rounds and it uh, gives you points for religion followers, foreign cities converted, and faith generated every turn. Which for me, here at the end of the scenario, scenario is 254. And uh, this scenario ended me at 600 points. So this was like on Prince. This is an easy one. I, I finished this straight up on the first try. So this wasn't too bad, uh, but let's still take a look at this one. It's very fun, fun scenario. So basically how I started, I just put out all the workers to improve, improve like the lands here and make some trade routes, etc. And uh, if we look at the China uh, civilization here, China Taoism, there's one thing that is really good for uh, this civilization, and that is the monastic isolation belief. So your religion's pressure never drops due to losses in theological theological combat. So this is what you want to be doing. Don't focus on the other religious units. Focus on the monks. The monks are here on the uh, civic tree at theology. Monk that can uh, wage theological combat, they can launch inquisitions, and they can evangelize uh, beliefs. So these are the these are the units you want to be using as China. Because the fact that you will not lose any religious uh, influence if these units lose a battle means that you can just freely go to the other lands to wage combat. And every time you win, every time you do a victory, then their freaking religion drops down here. You will get influence and their religion will drop down. And if you combine this with the th uh, theocracy, and why wouldn't you? With theocracy, all religious units gain the martyr ability, which grains a relic when the unit dies in theological combat. So that's even better. So now you have these monks that you can just take in here and you can fight the other religious units and if if they lose or if they win you will you will take down their religious influence and uh, ramp up yours and if your monk units get destroyed then you will not lose influence and you will also get freaking uh, relics here so this is a win-win situation this is how I was uh, I was pretty happy about the China selection because that is a really good 
really good combination. So don't bother with the other religious units. Just do these monks all day, every day. Very good. And uh, in this scenario, you can also like uh, you can build, you can build religious units too. So you could technically be uh, buying the religious units with faith, and then you could be producing them too. Although you want to be doing some of these wonders that give you more faith. Potala Palace, you could do this one, etc. So that's what I did. I was I was trying to like uh. I used faith to get the religious units and then I just churned out workers and traders and improving the city so you can you can ramp up your faith production so do whatever works for you. But the monk is the star of the show with China and Taoism. And uh, I put a few uh, few missionaries up to these city states up here, Zhongjing and Kaosong and Heian. But that's about it, because these are right on the fringe. So after that, just push out the monks everywhere. And uh, the monks uh, have promotions, and I always went for plus 10 religious strength in theological combat when in foreign territory. This is really good, because that makes it so that uh, these monks look at this religious strength 110. So these are really good fighters. And they will do, do great damage here. So that's that's how you can just overrun your enemies with the monk units. And uh, how I do this that I you have four spreads on these at this point. This might be higher or lower than normally. I don't. I'm not sure. But uh, basically, take your units next to the cities that you want to convert and use the spreads, but leave one. Because if you use all the spreads, then uh, you're going to lose the unit. So use them so that you only have one spread left. And then keep that unit around to wage combat against the other religious units. So that that's how you get like... Because you can still, when you're just waging combat, you'll be taking down the influence. So that's like... Uh, That is totally how you get the most out of these units. And uh, this area here, this is not not bad at all to convert. But uh, up here, I managed to get this Jingzhong, Jingjing, and Jining, Kamdo, even this Nagku. But uh, when I went to here to Lyasa, then I got my ass kicked totally. I don't know how, but these monks were freaking, or these religious units up here. Were super, uh, super freaking strength units. I don't know why, but uh, this uh, upper part here was definitely harder than the lower part. So try whatever parts you wanna wanna try yourself. And the civic tree is basic. It's pretty basic. There's no science. So just well get these temples, etc., that give you more faith. Just ramp up the faith. Get the monks, maybe get the Mahabodhi temple, etc. Get the lumber mill, basic stuff. And what comes to the government, then theocracy is the way to go. You get a discount on faith pur purchases too. You get the martyr ability. And uh, then you get a lot of religious policies like we have here. Each city receives faith for specialty districts. This might be something to change. But again, get this one. Plus five to religious uh, strength in theological combat. Again, just to ramp up the combat strength for your monks. Doubles faith yield from holy site district buildings. So uh, theocracy is definitely the way to go here. Then I have some harbor district adjacency bonuses. This uh, production towards wonders would probably be better because you want to get some of those wonders. They have more and more faith production for you. And then, as always, plus two influence points per turn towards earning city-state envoys. Because why not get those envoys? And uh, there's a lot of city-states in the game, but but like it said at the start, that you can only earn the suzerain bonus from one type. So if you have like Kai Song at max, then don't max any of the other ones. But I, I seem to put most of my envoys to these religious ones. 
I probably should have done like one envoy to some of these production and culture ones. Two, just to ramp ramp them up a little bit. But uh, science one, don't put anything and uh, commercial trade. I mean, money doesn't exist either, so don't don't put anything to those. I'd say that the pressure that you get from those, like they add 300 pressure, but I think I'd say that the pressure that the city states get from the envoys is marginal at best. So you're still gonna have to be pushing out your monks to convert the cities and fight fight the other units here. So don't count on that for anything. Just get whatever bonuses you want to get, like faith, 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 in the capital, in the every holy site district, etc. So that's the city states, Done. Religion didn't really have anything special here other than the uh, monastic isolation. Then you can get, with theocracy, you can get the martyr ability. So that's just plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four. Even more faith generation, that's great. That's a great combination. And uh, yeah, I just pushed out workers to improve, improve the lands over here, generate some... Uh, some wonders, keep improving the cities, and uh, all my trade routes are basically between the cities themselves. Some of these cities start out struggling, like the, especially the like the coastal cities seem to be struggling at the start. So uh, get some traders to them to strengthen up their um, production. That's probably everything that's going on in this scenario. I didn't have any problems winning it, but it's definitely a very fun one. And there's so many religions to try in this one as well from different areas like China and the monks was pretty, pretty strong combination. But uh, I wonder how these other ones fare. Because like everyone has their different bonuses here, so... Might be interesting to try the other ones in this scenario as well. But that was that. How to win the scenario on Prince difficulty as China. Taoism. So thanks for watching. If you had any questions, comments, your own strategies on how to beat this scenario. Uh, interesting observations, whatever. Leave them down below. But uh, thanks for watching and see you again next time. Bye bye. Take care. Have fun. Bye. -bye.